to Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Kingwin Pro League 2015. We're on to our last match of the day on this Thursday, although the you know, the entire week is not over for Kingwin. We've got the charity event ongoing this weekend, starting tomorrow for the um, Child's Play Foundation support. So this is going to be the last match of the day between Amaz and Kalento, which should be a really nice series. Yes, it's certainly the highlight of the day, I would say. Kalento and Amaz probably two of the most famous players in the world. Amaz certainly probably the most known Hearthstone player in the world. And Kalento is regarded as probably the best Hearthstone player in period in the world. So just a very big clash of uh, pretty much titans in this league. And unfortunately for Amaz, he's not doing so well in this league. He has kind of a similar position to Frezar. He is last place in his group with a record of one and four. Yeah, he's uh, currently 1-4, and, and Frezar was 1-4 and four just before he lost Ryan Killer, and he's now 1-5. and five. So if Amaz loses to Kalento, he's going to end up in the exact same position as Frezar. But to be honest, there's one thing that's, uh, that's true about leagues like these is, with the level of play that's involved, some people have to end up at the bottom of the group. That's just, you know, the, the nature of it is makes it so some people will end up with poor scores uh, over the, the entire league. Because then again, it's only, you know, it, it's a long period of time. But it's still only nine matches. So those players, even though, like for instance, Orange is currently one to four, right, in the event. But he won two tournaments recently. So that's that doesn't say anything about his general player performance. Or at least it doesn't, you know, absolutely say anything. So Amaz's poor score is not necessarily due to, you know, poor performance in general. It just sometimes the draws don't line up, the matchups don't line up. You get you lose the mind games where your decks get completely countered by somebody who knows what to expect. Um, so that's uh, that's going to be always a big factor in those leagues. Yeah, and I have to be real here. Amaz is also a team owner. He's a big streamer. He has a lot of responsibilities. He's playing in a lot of tournaments. So compared to some of the other players who are not as well known, he might not have as much time um, into preparing for uh, this tournament as some of the other players. So definitely something going against him. And it's just a little unfortunate. But yeah, you know. That's the way it goes. You juggle responsibilities the best you can when you're in this position, but he, I think he's doing pretty well nonetheless. I mean, regardless, he's got an amazing team behind him, so that's always uh, a good thing. So Kalento today, we know the deck list. He's going to be playing Druid, Priest, and Warlock, and Amaz is going to bring Warrior, Druid, and Warlock. So both players are playing Druid and Warlock, and I think that's the most that we've seen of class overlapping for the day. Yeah, um, I'm... Actually, these lineups are really predictable, and I pretty much know like both these players' deck lists card for card almost, just because they're known for playing these decks. Uh, Kalento will be bringing probably, I would say, a mid-range Warlock deck that he got to number one legend with just yesterday or the day before. It has, uh, it's like, it looks like a typical zoo, but it only has one flame imp. It right. has a, a Sylvanas in it. It has a. Uh, I think it actually has Melganis in it as well. Meanwhile, I think I think I know what the one you're talking about, right? The yes. more aggressive mid-range variant. Yeah, so it's like a well, it's kind of like a less aggressive zoo, I would say. Meanwhile, yeah. okay. Amaz is is going to be bringing a more aggressive zoo, one that uh, him and Sixo developed together, I believe. It features Imp Gang Boss, and it also features Bane of Doom. And I believe between the two. Um, deck lists there's going to be four bane of doom so a lot of random demons are going to be spawning i have to say yeah that should be kind of nice actually i always like bane of doom so the both players are ready kalento is going to be picking up his warlock for the first game and amaz is going to be picking up druid i would say neither player has a huge edge over the other unless kalento's zoo really kicks off with an amazing start um you said you know it was on the more a slower zoo so that gives the druid the opportunity to respond a bit you know more readily yeah, that being said, like, if a Bane of Doom goes off and something like a Dread Inferno comes out of the Bane of Doom, there's going to be, like, little way for Druid to deal with it. So just yeah. the variation and the RNG of cards like Bane of Doom can allow for some really impressive comebacks. Yeah, there's, like, 14 demons, I think, you can get from Bane of Doom, and nowadays, a lot of them are actually worthwhile. Um, yeah. It used to be the case that the card was just horrendous by virtue of what it summoned, but now that it includes all the demons and the value of demons has been improved by Blizzard as a, as a result of, you know, a design switch. They stopped making demons that just had pure drawbacks. Then you end up with a higher Bane of Doom quality. Yeah, to be honest, there's only three or four demons that you don't want from Bane of Doom. There's uh, Blood Imp, Flame Imp, Voidwalker, and uh, Mistress of Pain. Mistress of Pain, maybe, yeah, but it's still on the and, edge. And... and Maybe Succubus, but Succubus is like kind of okay as well. Yeah, depending every, on the circumstances, yeah. Every other demon that you can get is just so amazing. 
All right, well, we're looking at an Innervate here in Amaz's hand, which means, uh, you know, Innervate Wrath, I think, are good, decent cards to deal with Zoo, depending on what you have on the third card. The thing is that Dr. Boom is not guaranteed to be... Do you keep Innervate in this position, depending on... I think I think you do. Um, just because you have to? <laughs> you need answers against, like, nice yeah. junglers to play Mimster. They'll just Pick up a Keeper of the Grove in this hand is amazing, I think. You know, it's funny because the, like, we were saying Keeper of the Grove, like, I said Keeper of the Grove is great against Zoo as a starter card. You know, it gives you the that early board presence. The drawback of it, I suspect, maybe that because the slow, the, the Zoo deck that Kalento's running is a bit slower, then it's also a bit worse. Yeah, I actually have to point out that you might notice that Amaz's background is slightly different from what it normally is when he's playing in tournaments or when he's streaming and that's because he's actually at the Archon house in Texas right now and not in Hong Kong where he usually lives so he's got a team behind him to support him not literally behind him because that would be cheating <laughs> yeah, but he's got a team to help him like go through Kalento's uh, recent games to go like help him make deck lists so he should be in a pretty good position right now. yeah to scout out uh, information and maybe refine deck lists all right. Well, that's a good start for Kalento with the knife juggler and the keep the um, the haunted creeper. Definitely not too shabby. And Amaz has to handle this now. The appearance of Doctor Boom almost makes you want to wait for that turn five, Doctor Boom. But you really can't get blown yeah. out. I, uh, he's gonna do it though. Okay, he's gonna go for that turn five, Doctor Boom. I think you know what this, this play fair. might work out. Like just. Like, if he didn't have that, I think he needed to coin out the Innervate Drew to the Claw because there's just no way uh, you can, like, survive for that many turns. Oh, that's oh, perfect. Perfectly on curve here. The Shredder is going to be able to contest this board quite nicely. Well, okay. how often? I, how do you feel about Iron Beaking that 4 3? I don't think it's too bad. Um, the thing with this deck, like, compared to other zoos, of course, if he's Kalento is indeed playing the same deck, is that it can afford to be a little slower because you have a lot of power in the late game with uh, Bane of Doom, Void Callers, Melganis, for example, and even Sylvanas. Yeah, so you, that's the, that's the thing. Like the early starts, the or the early um, counters the Druid might get, don't guarantee they're going to be able to deal with your late game. Well, oh wow, that's a nice pickup. Nice hit, Juggler. Hey, good job. Let's see what comes out. It's Vitality Totem. Nice. A free kill here for the Juggler. Who was going to go face and realize, wait, that's going to heal up? Yeah, as long as it wasn't like Explosive Sheep or Unstable Ghoul, I think Kalento would have been fairly okay with that. Yep. Well, we see Dr. Five come out, which is a bit of a problem, but Kalento's got his answers. Yeah, he's got his own Dr. Five if he needs it, and... He does have the power of overwhelming, so no matter what, he can actually deal with Dr. Boom on this turn. And uh, after Dr. Boom is dealt with, Amaz doesn't have the most impactful plays. Drew well, he has Claw through the Claw and Nature of Lore and Rag. It's not terrible, but let's just be honest. The follow-ups that Kalento has are also pretty strong. You gotta give those cards credit. And now the uncertainty of the Boombot's detonations also adds to the complexity of the decision making here. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways you can go. The three main options I see are the power of overwhelming. You can combo that with the imp game or just play with the imp game boss. And then you can also tap. So judging from this play, I think he's going to play the uh, imp game boss. Is he just going full face? No, there's no way, I think. Six, seven, eight, plus Doom Guard. I didn't think so. Whoa! What a hit! Yeah, really nice sequencing from, uh, from Kalento. And Are wow, you kidding me? Wow, those perfect boom bots. Yeah, this those boom unreal. bots. Like, that was like the worst case scenario for Amaz and the best case yeah. scenario for Kalento. Yeah, that tends to be the case. Well... That's a tad unfortunate. And that Iron B. Cal into Implosion. I want to talk about difficult situation for a Moz. That's as bad as it's going to get. Yeah, almost certainly the uh, knife juggles are being able to clear this. Is the line, so. 
Well, maybe or the not. RNG will <laughs> will not or go not. in favor of Kalento this time. Okay, I but, lied. Yeah. Monk lied. So I guess the question now is, do I really want to trade away anything, or do I just want to punch face and put the druid under pressure? I think the the, the correct answer here is definitely putting the druid under pressure. I think the correct answer here is like I don't really care about swipe. Let him have swipe. Yeah. If she's got swipe, he's still gonna be in a, in a pretty tough spot. Well, Hamas does have a drill claw, but goes down to Doom Guard. I think you just slap Dr. Boom here for consistency's sake. Like, that way you're not throwing it away. There's no way you're gonna waste your Dr. Boom on this. Yeah, throwing away Dr. Boom, that's crazy. Noxious. Yeah, that's, that, there's no way anybody does that. I mean, maybe in rare cases. Where you misclick. Alright, Wrath. I think this will have to be a Wrath turn. Like, he needs to draw into either BGH or Swipe here. There's no other way he can win this game. You Wrath for draw on... Um, maybe even Dr. Boom. Because if you are looking for... Or maybe just like a demon this... or an imp, perhaps. Like if you're looking for BGH, if you think you need might need BGH. So that's gonna waste the imp spawn. He's gonna try to get that BGH, see what he finds, and he finds Drill Claw number two. That's not a dead draw, but that's not the yeah. optimal. Exactly. You're gonna have to think that these boom bots will do uh, an average, like you said, of eight damage, and they'll yeah. probably do eight damage to both Drill the Claws or four. Or the face. To... Eight day oh, damage to the face of the boom bots is also pretty likely. Wow, that gives Kalento the ability to vomit his hand on the board and play everything. You know, Voidwalker, Sea Giant, into. Wait, no, he can't flood the board any further. Yes. I lied. Noxious yeah. lied. Yeah, normally you would be able to, but you just don't have enough space on the board to throw everything on. Wow, first world problems. <laughs> I have too many 8 8s on the board. I can't play anything. Hey, well, God. it's not like Amaz is running Light Bomb here. <laughs> right, right. And so, Pistolento is gonna be able to... I mean, honestly, I don't even know... Yeah, that that is That's lethal, so straight up. I was gonna say, like, there's very little ways that I can see Amaz really come back from this, but he won't be able to. So, Kalento's gonna take the first game with that mid-range Zoo deck that you mentioned, um, which I think is what a lot of players have been running variants of that recently. And you say Amaz is no exception. Yes, uh, well, Amaz is probably going to be running more of a, a Zooey deck instead of a mid rangey deck. Uh, I don't believe his deck list consists of Dr. Boom or Malganis. It pretty much tops off at Doom, Guard, and Lothab. So it's a deck that 6 0 and Amaz made together. Uh, and it's certainly a good deck. It's certainly a, a very rushy deck, but it's just a little different, a little different flavoring. Yeah. So I wonder if Kalento's going to go for Priest or Warlock. Kalento's been playing a lot of his Recombobulator Priest with the, um, well, Recombobulator and Shadow Madnesses. And like, typically, it's a deck that he pilots extremely well. And uh, I think Control Priest in general is an archetype that he's very comfortable with. Uh, and you can tell he turns games that otherwise, you know, ma bad matchups, he turns around in ways that I, uh, I'm always impressed with the way he manages to turn around bad matchups. Exactly. I've played a lot of Kalento's list. And what I've learned from that list is. That list actually doesn't do well in uh, in long games unless you get really good thought steals. You actually the purpose of that list is you make it so that you make it really awkward for your opponent. Like if you steal, for example, a sludge belcher and you recombobulate it, it's usually just enough pressure to uh, uh, enough of a tempo swing to just end the game right there. All right, so, so you just get of, the board. Exactly. Instead of trying to make the game go long, you just try to win in the mid game with just insane priest plays. That's an interesting, because that's what Priest does. It combos in funky ways to change the way the board is going to look. And that the deck that Kalento is playing is exceptionally good at that. Yeah, we're going to be seeing... Well, why are we talking about Priest? Because the next matchup is going to be Druid versus Druid. Probably the most common matchup in Hearthstone. And I know it's a matchup we all love. Yeah, it's all about those amazingly well-crafted and designed and drawn wild growths and innervates and Emperor Thorsons as well. Now that that card's out, there's an additional mini game the Druids can play. Uh, beyond the simple wild growth and innervate, you can now too play Emperor Thorson in your Druid mirrors and enjoy the Force of Nature Savage Orb for seven mana. 
yeah, that's always a fun one. Or uh, my favorite is the force of nature, force of nature for uh, for ten mana. Yeah, that's pretty cool though. If that ha I, it's never happened to me yet. I I've never had that happen to me yet. It's it's happened in a tournament game before though. I will say. Oh, that. all right. So six tree ends. That's pretty cool. All right. Well, I think Amaz is already ahead on the Emperor Thorson mini game, but the Innervate mini game goes to Kalento. I have to say that it's probably the Innervate that's slightly more valuable. Um, yeah. Uh, what a lot of players say is that Wild Growth is the most important card in this matchup. But what I've noticed the last four times I've been casting games where one Druid player gets Wild Growth and the other Druid player gets Innervate, it's typically the Innervate player that wins because the other Druid player can't deal with the uh, can't deal with like just the pressure that comes with this Innervate. For example, the right twelve here, damage, right? The twelve damage it does recurrent, like because that's what it does. It's four once, four twice, then possibly another time, like in, in some cases. Yeah. So this pilot at Shredder might be able to deal that. Um, that 12 damage unless swipe is used and if it deals that 12 damage what Amaz will have to do is he'll be forced to play defensively the entire time and he'll just make more efficient inefficient plays than he normally would yeah and I really do like that I have to say oh wow okay wait something changed here the addition of the innervate changes the possible lines of play that Amaz can take there's a spectral knight play but there's also a Coin Shredder into turns Goofy really like Innervate Thorson next turn. Actually, that's not too bad. You coin out Shredder, then you go Innervate Thorson into a turn six Doctor Boom. Could that be done, or would that not be enough? No, you get turn five Spectral Knight. I think the problem here with any play is that none of the plays are defensive enough. And yeah, to, to to win you the game, right? Yeah, because you're you're on so much pressure right now. And it's actually, I have to question uh, Maz's decision making and to bring Spectral Knight into this uh, into this lineup because Spectral Knight you is a card that you just pretty much want to target rogues and warriors with. And I'm not sure if it's really good in the matchups that Maz should be expecting from Kalento, especially um, like you have to think Kalento will be probably playing his zoo deck and he'll most likely play his priest deck. So um, I would say like, I don't think the Spectral Knight is actually that great against Priest because, um, like, even though it's another four six, like you expect it to be Shrinkmeister could bald, for example, or Shrinkmeister. Yeah. I guess it, it's resistant to Shadow Badness. Uh, three seven. All right, it's not quite there, but there's a lot of damage on this board. Kalento's pretty close. Like one one turn of beatdown might just be enough with the shade next turn. Just going for the beatdown right now. I There's also certainly... have to go back to the BGH, by the way. The Kalento played as a body on turn 3. It's something that not a lot of players tend to do, and I think it's a huge mistake to hoard it if you can get the board presence right away. Like, after the Innervate Shredder, the next best yeah. thing is a three, like a 4 attack minion that comes out on turn 3. I think Kalento had to recognize that he was the beatdown in the, in the matchup because he got mm -hmm. the Innervate early, so he had to keep that pressure up. Yeah, I think it was a really nice decision for him. It's paying off, actually. He's really just very close to winning. He's got a Sylvanas on the curve, and then the moment he finds the late game Force of Nature Savage War, things could turn around. Well, I think he's gonna have, uh... He's gonna have to swipe here, right? I can't imagine anything else. So, actually, if he doesn't swipe, that's, Yeah, uh, Keeper of... Yeah, it's lethal. Six. Almost. Yeah, that, that, no, that is lethal if he doesn't swipe. Yeah. Well, that's exact lethal with Savage Roar. That's gonna give the game to Kalento. Yeah, Amaz trying to go for the possible double swipe on the following turn to wipe the board clean and maybe get a chance to transition to the late game, but there will be no late game. Kalento's gonna go up 2-0 against Amaz with two first games won. That's been a very short game, honestly. But this is typically what Druids do. One of the Druids will snowball while the other one does catch up, and then if he does catch up, then he tilts the game back in his favor. Um, yeah, that tends that, to be a very common trend. Just that Innervate play into that BGH, the, they were just so impactful because of the early damage Kalento was able to deal to Amaz. Kalento uh, recognized that he had to be aggressive with the cards that he was dealt with, and uh, he did so very effectively playing um, a 4-3 on turn 1 and um, curving into uh, Jungle Panther on turn 3.
Yeah, the interesting thing though about the BGH is that if Amaz had had the coin to go with the keep the, the keeper of the crow, that is to go with the coin, he would have been able to take care of the BGH before it dealt any, you know, the big damage. And so he would have lived, but it was really just that one card he definitely needed that he couldn't find. So we're gonna be moving on to the potential match point, I guess. It's gonna be Priest from Kalento against Amaz's Druid. And I think Kalento's Priest isn't as weak to Druid as I think other decks are. Um, especially not with Special Knight that you mentioned, you know, Shrink Meister Cabal, that's something that is not that uncommon. Yeah, um, it's not a, like, it might be that Amaz is running Spectral Knight, possibly because he doesn't want to get Shadow Madness into Recombobulated with, right. uh, versus Kal Kalento's Priest, so, yeah. that, that works as well, I guess, it, it kind of makes some sense. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I can disagree with that, if, if Spectral Knight... Uh, could get. I mean, if you're if all your minions can get recombobulated uh, after Shadow Madness, you're going to be in a world of hurt against Galento because that's what he does. Interestingly enough, though, Amaz's Kazan Mystic had zero chance to do anything against Galento. Yes, we do see the Kazan Mystic in the opening hand, but against Galento's lineup of Druid Priest and Warlock, I don't know many Druid Priests or Warlocks that have secrets. Do you? Is there some new secret Druid that's running around lately? Uh, yeah, it's using Druid of the Flame. If, you, if it stays uh, on the board for 17 turns straight, um, it gets plus 17, plus 17. Ah, uh, it's after all an easter egg. Yeah, it's an easter egg in Hearthstone, exactly. Which is why you have to play Kazan Mystic to counter it. You know what, Amaz has really good answers here to this injured Blade Master following the uh, Northshire Cleric. Yeah, you don't really expect two rats from the Druid player. Mm -hmm. So but I yeah, think Amaz is, is going to be happy here. Wow, one turn off. A little unfortunate for Kalento, but... Oh, well, that's okay. The swipe is okay, at least. Uh, Savage War probably won't be of much value, because uh, it looks to be that uh, Kalento will be trying to come back into the board. Yeah, we're looking at Dr. Five, though, from Maz's perspective. Dr. Five or Ancient of Lore on Five? I think Dr. Five could be typically a bit more impactful, but you're always wary of the, uh, the potential follow-ups. Uh, maybe we will not see Dr. Five after all. Druid of the Claw is still very good here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a 4-6, it's uh, pretty threatening. Um, you could also actually just... Pain you, the out of... I, uh, Yeah. Like hero power. Yeah, hero power, innervate Druid of the Claw, and that feels really good because the, the Akunai is just really threatening on the board. You can't let it sit there um, because it delays every tempo play you want to make. And if you do overextend, you're going to get punished. So I think Amaz has to answer it as soon as possible. Alright, this is a Bloodfin Raptor for the Druid of the Fang. That Amaz may be playing in this deck, because Druid of the Fang is just everywhere. Perfect BGH bait. That's true. <laughs> Alright. That's, that's, that's where you should uh, get your information from. Play Druid of the Fang. <laughs> exactly. Just try it out. See how it goes. Yeah, I'll be here really, when you when you lose. Really unfortunate top deck for Kalento. Two circle of healings when both one injured blade master and one uh one um, organized soul priest have been used and wow. Uh, I was gonna say that turn six is horrible, but that turn six is not horrible at all. Maz so picks Cal up the best turn six. Kalento basically needs an Akunai here? No, so again. I guess the Sylvanas is okay, but he really wants something slightly better here. Maz finds a wild growth. That is no hell, but I think... Actually, wait, what do I think? Do you just double trade? You can't double trade into that, there's no way. I think you just smash Dr. Boom on the board. And then just go on full aggression. Because you're getting a swipe for two mana afterwards, and an initial floor for five. So picture the pressure that's coming up. That's a lot. Well, there is a Nova, and a Pyro, and a swipe. Oh my goodness, could that be exactly what Kalento needed? He's gonna do some math here, but... The problem with those boom bots is that... <laughs> if they die to swipe, they risk killing the wild pyro, I think. Right? If the wild pyro is played first at any point. Well, I think, uh... Kalento can almost guarantee a steal on Dr. Boom here. Oh, he can guarantee it, 100%. It's just that... Like, I'm just well, not sure... Well, there's a possibility the bombs, uh, killed Sylvanas before he could do right, that. Right, right. stolen Thorazine instead. That would have been really problematic. Well, Ma Amaz is now back on the defensive. 
But not that much, because the moment he finds, you know, the combo that he needs, he could be okay. He finds one piece of it. Is he thinking about Wild Growth thing to get anything done? I don't think so. Yeah, you... There's not much you can do with 10 mana that you can't do with 9 from this hand. Yeah, I don't think so either. Maybe he's thinking about swiping face to put his opponent on nine, like near lethal range with the combo, but that's a huge telegraph. Even though it's a huge telegraph... Um, it still might be a good play, but... Yeah. Yeah, the problem is like you don't have the Savage War in your hand, so... Yeah. It might be just a bit too YOLO, I would say. He's definitely considering it. I mean, either way, his turn now, his turn nine, sorry, is pretty much you know set in stone with Shredder and Spectral Knight. I feel like this is good enough on its own. He does really need to reach for that ten mana. But the swipe is definitely a consideration. Maz has to hurry up. I've never seen a Maz rope, but you know, there's always a first. And yeah, there we go. Swipe to face. Now Kalento has to be wondering. Why did he hesitate so long? Does he just not have it and he's gambling? I think it's he's thinking that um, this will force my opponent to heal his face. Yeah. Kind of. Um, and he won't be able to heal Dr. Boom at the same time, so he'll have to go for a defensive play. But fortunately for Clento, he not only has uh, he can hero power here, but he also has a circle of healing and he has the Holy Nova, which will pretty much bring Dr. Boom right out of like any sort of range. So. Clanto still has a 7-6 on the board, and he's safe from combo, so... Yeah, Amaz may be in somewhat of a difficult position here. But with Shredder and Spectral Knight... What does Clanto do? There is Act... Oh, wait, Shrink my Look at that. How did I exactly. not? Dude, that is the worst outcome. Spectral Knight is gonna get stolen away. Or... Yeah, I mean, I, there's no way it's, it's not. Unless he Shadow Madnesses the, uh, the Shredder at all. He's gonna take the Shredder instead. Doesn't want to leave any minions up on the Druid's board to make sure it doesn't, you know, give another minion for the combo. Makes a lot of sense, and this is exactly why Clento is so scary with, uh, with Priest. He won a tournament recently, a 128-man uh, Swiss tournament, in which, like, he wasn't invited to, like, the round of 16. He was invited, or he came to the round of 128, and he just dominated that tournament, getting first place uh, in France. Well, there's a lot of damage here on on uh, Kalento's side, right? There's 18 on the board, I believe. Yeah, there's 18 on the board plus Savage Ward. That would be lethal. So it's just a matter of... The Maz trying to kill... Sa He's dead. That's it. Game over. Yeah, that's it. And uh, Kalento will be taking a 3-0 in this series. Pretty unexpected, I would say. Well, Savage Ward will do that. <laughs> that yeah. that's, what, that's what happens. Yeah, both the uh, final results of the series, which was a 3-0, and also um, also the how this game ended with the Savage War coming from the Druid's hand, they were unexpected. But you know what? Amaz, he probably didn't prepare too hard for this match. He uh, isn't do too, doing too well in the league, so he probably doesn't have much of a chance for playoff anyway. He might have just, uh, yeah, like I said, not prepared as much. So it could be understood yeah. that it could be a 3-0 in this situation. Yeah, we did mention that earlier, you know, the more, uh, the, lower, the longer the league goes on, the people who are at the bottom of the group sometimes don't even want to fight for the spot in the playoffs or the reinvite at that point. So that's definitely a possibility, and Amaz might be exactly in that position. So Kalento takes the series pretty convincingly, which means he's actually going to be in a, I mean, he's back uh, in a pretty good position, I think at 4-3 in his group, which is pretty solid. He's still got a chance for the playoffs, and... You know, has a really solid chance for a reinvite. He had a really rough start initially in the league, but picked it right back up uh, after the, the the beginning of the uh, the league itself. Yep. Ooh, you see a full picture of Amaz. You probably can't see it, but we're getting like a full screenshot of Amaz in the Archon House. Yeah, Archon he's flailing around in this chair. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, no, he's not. He's being very normal, looking at his screen. All right. Yeah. Well, that's going to be it for the day, guys. This is the uh, the last match of the day between Kalento and Amaz. Now, it's not over for the for Kingwin. That is this week we have the Kingwin for charity event on Friday, Saturday and, you know, over the weekend. It's going to be to support Child's Play Foundation. We've had a few of them last year. This what this year is going to be the exact same cause. Child's Play Foundation, you know, getting toys and games for children in hospitals to make their days a bit brighter despite the fact uh, that they're stuck in a really 
awful situation. So that's going to be a really good cause event. I urge you to tune in. We're going to have the, uh, I think Callum Lasley and Azimo are going to be casting that event. Yeah, exactly. Even though they haven't cast together, they're both fairly competent casters. So I'm really sure they're going to do a great job. We also have an incredible lineup of players, both uh, a lot of players that have been in a lot of previous tournaments like Tice, like Sho, like Forsen. But we also have a lot of new players that we probably haven't seen as much. Players such as uh, uh, Muzzy. Uh, Muzzy, of course, he won Pinnacle 4, so really great to see him also um, following that, going to the tournament scene. Also, uh, some players from ESC Punchline, uh, a team that probably most people haven't heard of, but I am sure they're a very competent team as well. Yeah, I, uh, I think it's a, I think it's a French team, or at least those guys are, are French players as far as I'm aware. But yeah, yes, on this note, guys, so. um, this will be it for the day. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream, and until the next time, take care of yourselves and have an